Hello and welcome to episode 114 on the Online Trainers Podcast. Today's topic is you get to see behind the scenes. Hello and welcome to the Online Trainers Podcast where we go behind the scenes to uncover the latest tactics and strategies top trainers around the world are using to get more clients, dominate their marketplace and get their clients amazing results. There is absolutely no fluff here. I'm your host, Lynn Trin. Now, I have my lovely lady on my car ride into the gym today because she's working from home. So I thought I'd let you in and I'd let you listen to a bit of her uh, lovely, lovely wisdom into what it really takes to succeed, especially online. You know, you, we're really talking about how I've transitioned, but more, more importantly, what, uh, what, what, what success really is, what it really entails. I think a lot of the times, you and I are being sold into this dream. I think, you know, we're, we're being sold in this dream that success comes really easy and that we're away from signing up high end clients because we're conditioned to all these advertisements on Facebook and, and yada da. You know, we've got these experts promising us a world, yet in reality, we keep spinning our wheels over and over again to never be happy. So really, I, I, I wanted to bring on my partner, Kerry. She's sitting with me in, in the car. Um, we're just going to go in for a big gym session as well. But, you know, she's she's been wonderful because she's been helping me plan out our Ra- Bali retreat for our legacy members. Um, we're going to be f- streaming that live inside the Online Trainers Club group. But with that being said, Kerry, I mean, what, what have you seen in, in terms of the transition of me over the last, would you say, year or so in terms of let's start out just with with me as as a human being um you know what have you seen the biggest differences and, and why have those differences occurred first of all i just want to say hello oh. listeners <laughs> just welcome, a little the podcast, by the way. <laughs> a little play on words there hope you guys enjoyed that uh the biggest transition over the past few years for you uh lynn i think that would be structure number one uh what you loved about being an entrepreneur was that you could have the freedom of the time uh but then what that gave you was a lot of flurry uh across everything that you were doing because you didn't have the structure and now i think that you structuring your day and creating those daily rituals for you has been immensely advantaging you across all aspects of your business. One of the rituals being this podcast, <laughs> which I'm sure that uh, every all the listeners get the delight of listening to you in the car. I hope so. there's, there's what 1,600 people listening a day. So if you're one of them, that's really really cool. I think we ha- we don't ever get to talk about. Um, the partners or the people who you know, the kind of fitness entrepreneurs who are crazy enough to keep working twenty four seven they'll they'll keep hustling when you have that drive in you. I want to know on your perspective what what does it feel like to be kind of an entrepreneur's partner? What does it feel like to be the partner of a person who's completely focused and who would just do anything to to achieve their goals because they're just so hungry. Like I've just got this desire to work 24-7. I've just conditioned myself that way. Um, I want to know, I want to know, you know, and I'm sure the listeners want to know what it feels like to be on the other side when you're, you know, you're working a corporate job, um, you're working nine to five, and then you come home to see me erratic. <laughs> okay, this makes me laugh a little bit because I... I think if I could sum it up in one word, it would be acceptance and full acceptance of your partner. It is very, very different to come home from a nine-to-five job uh, than to see your partner hustling away (laughs) 24-7. But also I think it's inspirational and if you take out all the positives from it, which is the drive, the ambition, the, the, you know, the success minded drive that you've got, I get really inspired by it. And I fully accept who you are, who is different from me. And I think it really works. Awesome. Now, we coach some really high level, some guys inside the legacy program that are kicking ass at the moment. And, you know, you've, you've seen a lot of the stuff in, inside the online trainers club, such as, the questions just from your point of view Kerry I want to know you know what 
what's the difference between a trainer who's going to achieve success, who's going to absolutely kill it, and a trainer that probably won't make it in the online space? Because, you know, you've seen me transition, you've seen all the stuff I've had to do, you've seen me grow. So what really do you think are the key attributes that a successful trainer has? Tenacity, I would have to say. Uh, I don't know whether you've ever used that word before. No, never. That's out of my vocab. <laughs> it's complete uh, what tenacity. Explain to the explain to the listeners what that means. I think you have to be tenacious enough that you know you're you're going to be doing things that you may not necessarily feel comfortable doing, particularly like being on video and for me right now being on a podcast talking. And the online world is full of it. You're talking to a screen half the time. You're writing a post to millions and dozens of people that don't even know your name and you're putting yourself out there and you just have to be tenacious enough to do it. You have to let go of the fear of being judged completely and the fear of failure as well. I know that you've been writing emails for two years and at first you've probably failed a lot of times to get your message across. Yeah, definitely. Like I remember Kerry would tell you about this, the first email I wrote, you know, people read my emails now and I look at them and I still think they suck. But you're going back a few years and this goes back to me telling everybody on the, on the show, listening to the show that they have to be uncomfortable, you know. We look at this like like a little bit of a race. I well, I do anyway. Um, I'm generally highly competitive. I, I don't do a lot for myself, but when I'm up against other people and I want to beat other people and impress other people, I do a lot. So, yeah, like impressing Kerry. I, I trust me. Like you can ask her how how I met her. But with that being said, like I I truly think that if you're going to win this game, you have to think that every single person starts off on a even playing field, and if you're ability to jump on video be engaging if you take on that skill and you get really good at it you suddenly have a bigger advantage over your competitors it's like that very first hurdle um, most trainers will stumble at it and if you can jump over it you're ahead inside of the game so you know like go back to my first email Kerry. like what were they like to read unpleasant and maybe <laughs> <laughs> and Why? maybe a little bit of a waste of time for me because i just didn't feel like they flowed uh, but now, but now I will be very honest with all your listeners. I genuinely enjoy reading them and they are genuine. They are honest and they provide tremendous value. And guys, you are getting so much value for free. So, so, so <laughs> subscribe to my email list. No, no, no. But with that being said, like, I really wanted Kerry to tell you that I completely sucked with email. I'm not a writer. Um, in fact, going through, I remember going through high school, my, I, my parents would tell me to read all the books, you know, my Asian parents would tell me to read the books and do the maths. I was good at the maths, <laughs> you know, so that, that's quite, um, that's quite good common, right? Good with numbers, <laughs> Asians, but my English sucked. I hated writing. Um, in fact, it was my lowest, it was my lowest score and I, I, I just made it. I got the scores to get myself into physiotherapy. Thank, thank the Lord, but. You know, back then I hated English. I really didn't like it. So for me, writing emails was uncomfortable, but I knew that if I was going to succeed, I knew that if I was going to engage with people, I knew that it would be a skill that I needed to get better at. And over time, not that I'm perfect at it, but over time, it's it's been one of those things that I do on a consistent basis. So yeah, with that being said, Kerry, what else What else would you That's suggest? Tenacity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's tenacity. What else would you suggest to like people listening, you know, from your standpoint to giving them the upper edge? Like, what do I do every single day that maybe they can adopt that they don't get to hear directly from me? Um, you know, regarding my state, like people always ask me, how do I, how do I stay so confident? How do I, how do I stay like on fire? And the truth is I'm not on fire. I'm like, you know, there are a few days that I'm completely off, but how do I stay, yeah. how do I stay on my game? Yeah. Um, I think the results speak for themselves and every time that I see Lynn drive an output, he gets into state. So when he's not putting out content, when he's not, when he's just in his head, when he's just thinking and planning and being thoughtful is what I would say because sometimes he would just be silent for a whole 20 minutes with me thinking, 
I don't think that he's in his very best state. I think that he's the greatest when he's putting out content and putting out results for people and giving value to people and he thrives on it. He thrives on this podcast because he knows how much value he he puts to you guys. I've seen the feedback on emails that you sent to him and he he gloats. He loves them and that's what that's what drives him and that's what drives his state. No, she's completely spot on. I think over the last couple of days, um, you know, there will be moments, peaks and troughs on the entrepreneurial journey and, and, you know, you kind of move up and down. I think what gets me really big into state, and I'm sure if you apply this for yourselves, if you're lacking motivation at this moment in time, is have a chat to your clients at this moment in time. See how you can help them. See how, you know, as soon as you hear their results, as soon as you hear that you're contributing to their success, you will absolutely thrive. That will get you back into state. If you can help problem solve, I think it gives you your self-worth again. It, it makes you feel very valuable. And I think a lot of the times when I'm not when I'm not there, it's because I'm in my head. Like Kerry says, I'm I'm consuming information. I'm not giving out information. I'm not doing anything to affect the world in a greater state. So yeah, no, really, really good observation. Now Kerry, what I mean, you've you've been around and, and you've seen a lot of the stuff I teach to trainers. What What's kind of the biggest thing at this very moment in time would you recommend if a trainer wanted to make some money now? What what have I been teaching that's working really, really well um, to to obviously, you know, get clients? There's heaps of trainers out there that need more clients. You've you've seen this inside of the groups. What what do you think is the best way to get some clients now? What would Miss K recommend? Goodness. Don't you get all the secrets from me to <laughs> to put out? I get all the secrets from Kerry. So, Kerry, what what would you recommend? A, a, a trainer wants more clients. What should he or she do? I think true to the online fashion of things, a hybrid online program. I know that you started off that way and that's how we sort of met at the gym as well. It's scaling your time into a group environment online and offline and workshopping them through your program uh, together and then providing them an online program. Um, I'm not going into too much detail about it, but if, and I'm not trying to plug in Lynn's webinar, but you do have a webinar on it, which I think is amazing. And you take them through the steps on how to do it. Uh, no, you're you're completely spot on, and you did mention that I had a hybrid program, and and I did. Uh, that's actually how we first met when I was seeing you on Saturday morning, and I was running all these workshops when you were training at the gym, and I, I would have I would have classes. I'd I'd run from seven a.m. all the way to twelve p.m. Um, and I'd have one hour workshops, and I'd have ten to twelve guys rock up. Um, that was the first step in leveraging myself, and and that's how I first met you. But with that being said. Um, I'm, I think we're, we're reaching that time where it's going a little bit over the podcast show. So here's a different one for today, but really more importantly, guys, what I want you to do is your one task for today. What should their one task for today be, Kerry? I have a good one. I put it out to all the listeners to start something that you are uncomfortable in doing. Just start. Awesome. You heard it from the lady herself. <laughs> Start something that you're completely uncomfortable with doing and, and actually just get better at it. Um, I think if, if you understand that I was bad at English and I'm writing emails, I was bad at videos. I can show you my very first videos and yet, you know, I'm doing lives and, and, you know, you're just building that connection and trust. Just start something and then, and then really decide that you're going to master it. Really decide that you're not going to give up because, but, but don't care about the statistics. Don't care about who's judging you. Like I never ever go back to my emails and go, how many people read it? How many people unsubscribed? I hardly ever go to my podcast listeners to see who's subscribed. Um, I just go in, I upload the work and that's it. And it becomes a habit. So really, really good one. Thank you so much, Miss Kerry, for your time today. Um, and I'm sure we'll see you inside the Online Trainers Club more this year, correct? Correct. And thanks for having me. All right. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave me a five-star review on iTunes. And feel free to leave a review. And that way I can 
respond and I can take that on board in developing content to serve you. Now, if you're not a part of the Online Trainers Club on Facebook, please do yourself a favor and be a part of the conversation. That's where I add daily tips, tricks and strategies on how you can build out funnels, how you can get more clients and ultimately become a better online coach. Thank you for listening.